opening hymn is number 644. I invite the children to join in the procession to Children's Church and invite you to stand as you are able for our hymn. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your bulletin on page 2. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secret is hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join now in the singing of the Gloria in Excelsis. Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, whose son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow when he leads, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all were of the highly priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is 23. Please uh, answer in by the half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He revives my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The epistle is a reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his command commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 645.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Jesus, the good shepherd, draws us into community where we are known. You know the jingle. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Well, Jesus didn't work at Cheers, as far as we know. But without doubt, he shares this philosophy and calls us into this welcoming community where he says, I am the good shepherd. The writer of John's gospel quotes Jesus' I am statements frequently. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. We're not to overlook the subject and the predicate. I am. When God commissions Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, God identifies himself as I am. And as we read in the third chapter of Exodus, God says to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. The holy phrase, I am, encompasses all that is God, all that God is, all action, all presence, all that we cannot possibly comprehend, I am. There's no need for God to quantify himself otherwise. To do so would limit God to a specific essence or mode. 
I am. End of sentence. Jesus' I am statements are intended to alert us to his mutual belonging with God, his being meshed with God, God in human form. Jesus is God come to earth, the word, the word made flesh, the model for us of what it is to live in this authentic, holistic community as is intended for us. Our gospel lesson presents us with the image of the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Always on fourth Easter, this fourth Sunday of Easter, our gospel lesson presents the good shepherd imagery. We know this as good shepherd Sunday. Jesus is the good shepherd, the shepherd who is noble, and true and competent. The people of first century Palestine, for them, shepherds were somewhat troublesome wanderers. Shepherding was a lowly and most humble profession. Shepherds making their home with their sheep. The religious and political leaders of Jesus' day certainly would not have accepted or understood their role as one of shepherding, lowly and unceremonious, and much less their place as, as much less their place as the hired hands of the shepherd. An intention of Jesus' metaphor is to call them out, equating these leaders to shepherds hired hands who, unlike the faithful shepherds, are not trustworthy and stable leaders in their positions of great responsibility as leaders of God's people. Jesus is pointing out their lack of willingness to stand upon religious truths and to risk their lives for their subjects. He refers to them as the hired hands who run away out of fear. The religious leaders were not willing to connect to Jesus' metaphor. But the Christians of John's late first century audience were well, well understood the vital role of the shepherd in protecting the livelihood necessary in this agrarian society. The image of Jesus as the good shepherd was one to which they could relate. They understood and today we 